Hey everyone, Mark Thomas here. I want to tell you about an exciting movement that I'm seeing across the globe, and it's called ESG or Environmental and Social Governance. I'll tell you a little bit more about it coming up, but this all started about nine months ago. I was presenting to a board client of mine when they asked me, what is ESG and how can our current IT governance system support our efforts towards ESG governance? Well, you're in luck, ladies and gentlemen, because that's exactly what this presentation is talking about, how we look at ESG and integrate that into your governance system using existing frameworks. So what we'll talk about today is understand the history and the key points of environmental and social governance. We'll identify governance and management objectives and practices needed to create an ESG system. And finally, we'll associate information and technology aspects to the successful adoption of ESG objectives and practices in your governance and assurance efforts. So some things I really want to talk about in here is number one, like it or not, ESG is here to stay. So steadily, this is growing in importance to the investment community. When I really started looking at ESG, what I noticed was it was really focused on investment in ESG-friendly companies. But I'm starting to see this move away from just investments and now focus on the community, customers, employees, and all stakeholders of an enterprise. So today, corporations, we can address these long-term aspects of the relationship between our corporation, our customers, our suppliers, employees, regulators, and the public, as well as the ecosystem in which we influence. So we're today in an optimal position to support and invest in the environmental and social aspects of our communities and the environments at large. Well, now in 2015, the United Nations established 17 Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs. All member nations committed to these as a part of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Governments are working on this ESG plan, and in 2020, attention naturally shifted to addressing these goals that grew in urgency due to the coronavirus pandemic. So let me tell you a little bit about ESG, environmental and social governance. First, we'll start with environmental. That's the E in ESG. This is addressing the environmental indicators. The challenge put before organizations is to determine how the products, services, policies, and actions will minimize or even reverse the damage that humans have wrought on the environment. This would include things like environmental remediation, climate change, biodiversity, deforestation, pollution, energy and resources, and finally, carbon footprints. So that's the environmental side. Next, let's talk social. This is the S in ESG. More than ever, organizations are expected to be good community citizens. Both internal and external facing conduct is under scrutiny. If you think about it, there's two parts of the social. There's internal and external. From the external perspective, are we looking at our social position and are we helping the communities which we support? Internally, are we looking at things like our diversity and inclusion and those types of things? This could include human rights, racial justice, supply chain management, privacy and data protection, diversity, equity, and inclusion, community relations and philanthropy, label practices. Now, let's take a look at the governance side of this. This is the G in ESG. This is looking at your internal structures and controls, your procedures that you have adopted to govern yourself. You're also doing that to meet compliance requirements, drive decision-making, and address stakeholder needs. This could include in things like board composition, board structures, executive compensation, accounting practices, shareholder rights, and of course, our transparency in reporting, as well as bribery and corruption. This is the part we're going to focus on a little bit later in this presentation, how we can create that governance framework that we may have in place today using current frameworks that we have in the market. Now, some key benefits to ESG would include things like we need to contribute to both societal as well as business growth in the organization. Of course, this supports a resource-efficient and sustainable planet, helps make work more equitable, accessible, and rewarding, 
more transparent and ethical business practices. And finally, it can lead to sustainable profitability. We are seeing today that organizations that are ESG friendly in the long term will find what they're looking for when it comes to profitability of the organization. So let's move on and talk a little bit about how we might use technology to solve some of these tough issues. So in the technology space, are we going to really be rescued by technology? Well, if you think about it, data collection, data warehousing, analysis technologies, they have made our ability to report and have transparency of accessible data, and we can interpret that data. Think about it. With the whole drive towards artificial intelligence, we also might see an additional whole new frontier on how we look at managing ESG. Collecting the social and environmental information has become increasingly more accessible and understandable with the use of, say, these modern technologies. And finally, the management and reporting technologies can measure performance, facilitate communications, and link our ESG efforts to governance, risk, and compliance efforts. So how do we now take ESG, enable that, with our information and technology governance structures. So some considerations. Number one, leadership needs to create this culture that understands and supports the enterprise's ESG vision. Next, we need to create a principles-based governance approach to enable value creation for all stakeholders. Folks, there are current frameworks in place that can help us do this, and you know where I'm going to go. I'm going to go right to COVID here in just a few minutes. We need to leverage those industry-proven frameworks, like I said just a minute ago, to establish a governance system to support ESG. You do not have to go create a brand new governance system to support ESG efforts. What I'm finding is if you have a good framework around IT governance and the governance of enterprise IT systems, you might have the key ingredients you need to be able to get kicked off with a good effort towards governing your enterprise IT, and you know I'm going to run right to the COVID framework as a great launching point for you to link your efforts to. Now, a little bit on COVID, of course, it is not originally designed as an ESG framework. It was designed to help organizations and enterprises in creating that tailored governance structure around the use of information and technology. It's principles-based. It has components and it provides what I call those ingredients to a governance and management structure over the use of information and technology, which will be key in your enterprises to using INT in your efforts. So let's take a look at some of the things that COBIT might offer me that might help me take a look at these ESG efforts. So if you want to think about the overall framework structure, of course, we have enterprise governance here on the top, IT governance, and ESG governance. Well, up on the top here, first we see enterprise governance. An organization exists to balance performance and conformance that you see here on the top. On the performance side, we may use, say, the balance scorecard. From the conformance side, we may be looking at things like COSO and so on. But right in the middle, if we can balance those, we can now create value. So let's take a look at this next piece here when we move down into the IT governance space. There's a valuable link between enterprise governance and ESG governance, or ESG, by using the COBIT framework. And we'll talk about how we might do that here in just a few minutes. So under the ESG governance, I see a great connection between how we look at governance at the enterprise, how we look at governance for ESG, and what things we can do to enable information and technology using the COBIT framework to help us accomplish this. As you might recall, we have something called the COBIT core. And in the COBIT core, we have 40 governance and management objectives. The goal here isn't to cover every one of these governance and management objectives. But what I did is look through each one of these objectives and identified some of those key objectives that are critical to the success of your ESG program. One of them stuck out really, really well for me. Of course, they could all work, but I'm going to use one as an example of how you might be able to look at the governance or management objective to help you identify the things that you need to do 
within your ESG process. And of course, I'm going to pick managed innovation. I think it's a great one to start with. So let's take a look at what COVID says about managed innovation. Think about this in the context of creating an ESG program. Of course, we want to maintain an awareness of our INT related service trends, monitor emerging technology trends, proactively identify innovation opportunities, and plan how to benefit from innovation in relation to the business needs and our strategy. So you can see, if you look down a little bit further, we talk about emerging technologies, we talk about existing established technologies, and business and IT process innovation. The purpose of managed innovation at the bottom is to achieve a competitive advantage, business innovation, improved customer experience, experience, and improved operational effectiveness and efficiency by exploiting INT developments and emerging technologies. Ladies and gentlemen, if that doesn't help you with your ESG efforts, I'm not sure where else to start. So let's take a look. In managed innovation, as you might recall, we have these things called practices. And within managed innovation, there are six practices we have in this framework under APO4 Managed Innovation. I'm not going into the details of every single activity that's under this, but I want you to think about how you can create the basis of an ESG governance system using just maybe one or several of these governance or management objectives. Under APO4.1, create an environment conducive to innovation. All right, it's a conducive to innovation considering methods such as culture, reward, collaboration, technology forums, and mechanisms to promote and capture employee ideas. Think about how that can be used with environmental and social aspects of your governance program. Next, maintaining an understanding of the enterprise environment, working with our stakeholders to understand their challenges, have an adequate understanding of enterprise strategy, competitive environment, and other constraints so opportunities can be enabled by new technologies and they can be identified. This is key. This now allows us the opportunity and intake mechanism for great ideas when it comes to addressing the challenges we're up against when it comes to environmental and social aspects of our business. Scan the technology environment. Have a watch process to make sure we're monitoring the external environment. ESG is internal as much, if not more, on the external environment. What are the emerging technologies that can assist you in being a more ESG-friendly organization? Monitor that marketplace. Look at the landscape, industry sectors. And by the way, when it talks about legal and regulatory trends, I'm telling you right now, if you do not have any ESG regulatory concerns in the country you operate in, you probably will very soon. So do yourself a favor and start getting these things in place today. Of course, we're looking at the potential of those emerging technologies and having those innovative ideas. Understand the business potential of this. As I mentioned before, organizations with solid ESG programs are finding they are more profitable and they have more throughput and they have a much more sustainable organization and the enterprise or the communities in which they work are benefiting from this as well. Next, Recommend appropriate further initiatives. We're evaluating and monitoring these new technologies or these innovative ideas as it comes to ESG. So we get our stakeholder support for those. And then, of course, monitor that use of our innovation. Looking at those technologies, those innovations during the adoption, integration, and the full economic life cycle. And one of the important things here is identify your lessons learned. <laughs> so I know that was a very quick look into just one of the several governance or management objectives just in a framework called COBIT that can help you set up the stage for creating your ESG program. Folks, there's going to be a lot more information coming out on ESG, new frameworks, new legislation, new rules and regulations. You probably should start taking a look at your governance structures today to help prepare you for the compliance requirements that you might have coming up. And like I said, organizations are seeing great benefits to this. So let's finish up talking about my tips, my tricks, and my closing here. So a couple top tips I've got is number one, stay aware of the global trends, regulations, and compliance requirements in the ESG space. As I mentioned, they are coming. 
right? We're seeing a huge global movement to create some standards and regulations. We're seeing them in North America. We're seeing them in Europe, around the world. Be prepared now and take a look at these areas. Next, adopt an organization-wide GRC framework to support these initiatives. This goes back to the COVID comment I mentioned earlier. Remember the slide I had that showed enterprise governance, IT governance, and ESG governance? Put that in your head. Start thinking about those frameworks. Start thinking about this distinction between governance and management and how you can deploy a system for governance in your organization that will be able to handle not just ESG, but any other governance requirement we have. COBIT is a tailorable framework, and it can help you modify that framework to fit your needs based on that external environment. As we said, use COBIT as the overarching IT governance framework. Even though it doesn't say ESG anywhere in COBIT, governance and management objectives, the practices, the activities, and the components will give you that framework to be prepared for your ESG program and make sure that ESG is a topic at all levels of the organization, starting with the board of directors all the way down to individual contributors. What can I be doing today with the innovative use of information and technologies to help us in our ESG efforts? But you won't know what those ESG efforts are unless it starts at the top and you embed this into the culture of the organization and the organizational structures and all the components at which you operate. Ladies and gentlemen, ESG is here to stay. It's not going anywhere. If you believe it or not, it's still coming at you, and it may be a legal or regulatory requirement for you at some point. But you know what? It's a good thing to do. And as IT professionals, we can look at our structures, we can look at our technologies, our processes, we can look at our services and try to determine ways that we can help the environmental and social aspects of the world that we live in today, have that framework, be prepared. What we just talked about was understanding some key points of ESG. We looked at a couple of governance and management objectives from the COBIT framework that I feel would be applicable for you to start with and looked a little bit at the technology aspects of helping you adopt your ESG objectives and practices in your organization. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your kind attention. It was a very quick overview of ESG and how you can, how you can adopt practices and activities from common information and technology frameworks. I look forward to keeping in touch. Have a great conference, everyone.